I don't know if this happens to everyone or if I'm just special in the worst possible way, but sometimes, sometimes you have a hard time with the hobby. Uh, maybe your motivation isn't up. Uh, maybe you've had a couple of projects that ended in disaster and in the shameful trash can of, I'll just get this model replaced later and I'll try it again when I'm in a better place. Maybe it's just me. But when this happens to me in other areas of my life, sometimes what helps is a quick win. And today, that's what I'm chasing. A quick win to help get my confidence back up, remind me of some of those skills that are rusty, and help me push through this weird time in my Warhammer 40k hobby. So, for the quick win, what project am I going to get? Well, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do, well, I'm going to do something small, I'm going to do something fun, and something that will allow me to kind of experiment uh, a little bit, or the project won't necessarily contribute to any of my goals in terms of armies or whatever. Uh, it's this guy. Mibilor Darkfang, Chaos Sorcerer Lord. It was free from Games Workshop as my second year reward for subscribing to Warhammer Plus. It looks like it's a Age of Sigmar kind of a kit. I don't own any chaos. I don't own any. Uh, uh, I don't own any Age of Sigmar stuff. But look, it looks cute. It's got these little demon things that are kind of cute and wacky. And then there's the, the normal guy. Let's give this a shot. So hello and welcome to Your Average Bear Gaming, I am George. I'm working on this kit because uh, I think it's going to be fun and I need a quick win. I'm going to approach this kit um, kind of with uh, an approach I've been, I don't know, it's stuck in my head. Uh, I've kind of gone away from glazing and I've embraced dry brushing most of my models. It, it, for some reason, it seems more satisfying. I like the result, um, but it's got some weirdness uh, when you get towards the later stages. But you know what? None of that matters. This kit looks fun. These, these small models look cute, and I'm gonna give them a shot. So, you put together this kit, and by put together, I mean basically these four dudes, these little demonlets, uh, you put, you glue them on their stand, and you start a painting. Uh, this guy, uh, the actual demon lord or the chaos lord himself or herself, it's not entirely clear. Um, it has a couple of pieces, but it's very little assembly. And uh, and yeah, it's fairly unchallenging. It's fairly forgiving. Uh, it's no big deal. It's mostly about the painting and mostly about these cute little demonlets. So once these models were on their bases, I gave them a quick slathering of the stuff. Citadel Colors Agrell and Earth. It has a nice crackle effects. It's a, essentially a crackle, well, not a crackle medium, but a crackly texture paint. And then I gave them a nice prime with my favorite flat black primer. I didn't do any Zenithal highlights on this thing or a Zenithal prime because I'm not using speed paints uh, on this or any of the kind of ink based or transparent kind of colors. Uh, I'm going to go straight for acrylic, so it didn't really need uh, the Zenithal highlight. Uh, but as a matter of fact, the first layer of dry brushing for the base coat is going to end up working essentially like as an ethyl highlight. I start off with a fairly generous dry brush uh, in a color that's kind of a step or two darker than what I want the eventual color to be. Um, I, I did this for the most part. Some of these models I didn't do that for, uh, but for most of them I did. So for example, uh, the little this little uh, lizard dude, I'm calling him Slimer, um, I started him off with a very, very dark green uh, on the initial uh, dry brush pass. Subsequently, I added kind of a, a, a lighter green and then maybe some little highlights of uh, kind of a yellowy uh, color, but each successive dry brush pass was uh, not only a lighter color, but also less and less generous. So the very first one, most of the model had that very dark color, and then the second pass had kind of a, 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 a less generous uh, color to kind of establish 
uh, the mid-tone, and then when it was appropriate, I went with a very light dry brush for just those highlights with a lighter color, um, and that's kind of how I established my, my shadows, my mid-tone, and my highlight. The thing to remember, though, is because I use dry brushing, the actual shadow color is going to be black. It's going to be the prime. There's a lot of little cracks, crevices, depressions that are going to end up staying black, and that's exactly what I'm going for. I like that dramatic contrast between absolute darkness and, uh, you know, the highlights. And I picked some colors that I don't normally work with because this is a quick win. It is uh, designed not to contribute in some meaningful way to an army or a pre-established pink scheme. I got to choose whatever colors I wanted. And if they didn't look quite right, that's fine. These are goofy models. These are chaoslings. Uh, they're, they're not, just looking at them, it's clear they're not designed to be taken seriously. So I didn't. Once the dry brush passes were complete and nice and dry, I went ahead and started picking up some of the details, uh, like the swords, uh, any like uh, cloaks, uh, I don't know, weapons, scrolls, that kind of thing. One of the little, well, like this guy right here, uh, I'm preferring to think of him not as a weird little tiny clansman, uh, but I'm thinking him more like Orko. So that's what I'm calling him. Uh, he's clutching some scrolls, and so I picked out the, that scroll, that little detail, uh, in a different color, kind of to, to resemble sc uh, scrolls. But I use the kind of same approach, where I the initial base layer, uh, the base coat of that detail not dry brush, I should, I should add, uh, is a darker color than what it's eventually going to be. I went in and added highlights manually, uh, and it looks pretty good. I will say I was a little concerned that I'm mixing techniques here, right? So the, the bodies, the main part of the model has a... Uh, it's clearly dry brushed and so there's a lot of negative spaces where all you can see is black that's deep as dark as shadows but the the but the details right like this the scroll or the 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 lizard dude's little flute that he's carrying or the sword on the armor guy those aren't dry brushed and they don't look dry brushed they're very clearly different from the main model and if you're thinking about the dry brushing effects like the dark shadows as a as a as a as a consequence of really sharp, direct lighting, right? That's that's what leads to very the darkest shadows. Um, then it doesn't make it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? The are the weapons and the scrolls are those having a different kind of light source? It doesn't really make sense. But you know what? This project is a quick win. It doesn't need to make sense. It just has to be quick and fun and look okay. And here they are, my little gang of chaoslings and the, the, the mean dude who's actually taking himself a lot more seriously than the rest of these guys. Uh, I've got Orko. I've got... Actually, I didn't name this guy. He's just like a knight. Uh, but I've got Jack here, and I've got this lizard guy here, who I'm calling Slimer because he looks like that Ghostbusters ghost uh, if you squint and uh, sustain some brain damage. They look pretty good. I am pretty... I won't say impressed, um, but I'm happy with the results, and more importantly, I had a good time. And I'm excited about my next project, which is exactly what I was hoping this project would do. Um, I didn't spend a ton of time, uh, but I was more engaged in the process, and I can't exactly tell you why, but maybe it was the pressure of not having to integrate them into an existing army. If I messed up on this, it doesn't really matter. I wasn't going to go out and buy another one, because... Uh, I don't have an army like this. I don't need these. I just like them. All right, here is Jack. He's <laughs> he's actually not a pumpkin. He's like an evil cauldron. Um, and I say he's evil because if you look in the actual contents, he's got little teeth. They're gnashing. They're looking to get out. But the rest of them, he's a cauldron with legs, and he's got a little ladle there, uh, which is kind of terrifying, but also in a cute way that I can't quite put my finger on. He's just a charming little cauldron. And he's got a stumpy little tail that, uh, if you squint hard, yeah, it's a little stem like a pumpkin. Uh, I don't know why he painted him like a pumpkin. I just thought he, he gave me pumpkin vibes. And yeah, you have never seen an orange cauldron, but I didn't want to do a black cauldron because I've got enough black models as it is. I don't need another one. Uh, and this guy, he was just dripping with personality and whatever ooze that is. 
And uh, so yeah, I just went nuts and I really like the results. Say hello to Slimer. He is a little lizard dude, which is very clear because he's got these little frills. Uh, I did some glazing on them to kind of show the gradual transition from orange to yellow, but it's very, very subtle. It's not his main focus. In fact, there's not a lot to this guy. Um, he's carrying this little flute bone stick, which I thought was, you know, equal parts cute and also kind of ghastly. Uh, but my favorite thing about this guy, my very favorite thing, is look at his eyes. I gave him evil yellow eyes with red, sl uh, like a striped pupil to just drive home. He is not a human. He is very clearly something else. And I thought it's just such a nice effect. Um, it's something that I tried because I didn't care about this model very much. And you know what? I think it paid off. He's evil and cute and I kind of dig it. Here is this guy. He is a he's a knight. He's a sword guy. Uh, so there's not too much happening with this guy. Uh, oddly enough, he was my least favorite to paint because there's just not a lot happening here. But he was a guy who originally struck my fancy when I first saw this kit. Um, he just looks like a normal knight, just kind of really, really small. Um, and, I, you know, he caught my eye, but as I was painting him, I was, he's just okay. He looks good, but he's just okay. He doesn't have the kind of personality that the other ones do, but he's got the kind of the bronze armor um, happening because, you know, bronze equals evil in the Warhammer 40k universe. Okay, this is not Warhammer 40k, but still bronze equals bad. Uh, he's got that little red tabard there. Uh, kind of muted boots. They're dusty from that ground, which I thought was very boring, but also kind of striking. I don't know. Uh, and I did give him a shiny green sword because he's chaos and green equals evil magic. And he's got uh, inside his helmet, he's made of green evil magic too. It's the only part of the model where I used speed paints, and I like speed paints for that specific application because when done correctly and carefully, um, well, I'm using, I'm still using Speed Paint 2.1 for this stuff. I haven't bought this 2.0 because I'm not painting that much, uh, but it, it gives you a nice effect. And if you go over it with a coat of uh, gloss varnish, uh, the rest of the model is matte, but those pieces that are shiny, uh, they were supposed to be like a emissive LED effects or something like that. They're, they're glowing uh, internally and uh, the speed paints uh, along with a, uh, a thin coat of gloss varnish, I think do a really good job of communicating that this is special. All right, the last one of these demonlets is, pr I thought he was gonna be my favorite uh, when I started painting and he turned out to not be because because quite frankly, Jack is a character and I kind of love him to bits. But Orko, he's got something happening here. Uh, he's uh, he's kind of a dark violet. There's a lot of darkness uh, everywhere, but you can kind of see his uh, cute little feet. He's clutching on some scrolls and they look, I don't know, they look like scrolls to me. That was the idea. Uh, and so I, I went with it. Um, and uh, he's got a little red uh, ribbon that ties, that ties those scrolls together and evil shiny green eyes. Um, I don't know, he kind of looks like Orko to me. He's short, stubby, he's got a pointy hat. Uh, yeah, Orko. Welcome to my crew. Finally, we have this guy, Mibilor. Yeah, he's clearly the bad guy. He's clearly the the reason why we can't have nice things. Uh, he's a chaos sorcerer or a lord of some sort, and he's, uh, he's you can tell he's evil because uh, he's got lots of these eight-pointed stars, which are chaos uh, in the Warhammer kind of universe. Um, and you know, while he wasn't my favorite model, I really like the way he turned out. The, the combination of dark, red with bronze is not something I ever tried before. I don't think, uh, I don't have a lot of chaos models, so yeah, that's how that worked out. Um, but yeah, so you can see on his robe, he was very clearly dry brushed, right? You can see all that negative space, all that dark shadow, especially in the back. Uh, and so part of this was because um, 
I'm not great with dry brushing. Like, I know there's ways to get kind of in there and be more generous with the dry brushing. But also, I kind of like the way it looks. And that's what this is all about at the end of the day. It doesn't make absolute sense in terms of lighting effects. But, rule of cool, people. Rule of cool. And this guy, he's kind of dripping cool. Um... And it might be hard to make out, but look at that face. That face just screams bad guy, doesn't it? He's, and you may not be able to see it because uh, it's very subtle, but he's got like fangs, like vampire fangs. His eyes are covered and he's looking out, I'm guessing, over that magic thing on his helmet. Uh, yeah, dude is scary. He is very clearly evil. And I'm really proud of this furry gauntlet that, he's ha that he has. Uh, I've spent some time doing some manual highlighting uh, on all of these b uh, models, but his arms uh, just, yeah, they're special. It kind of reminded me of the Avatar of Cain from the Eldar, uh, Eldari. Um, but it's his own thing. And while that's what I was hoping for, I wasn't actually expecting. See, I've, I've had kind of a string of failures uh, with some of my projects uh, where I just, you know, I couldn't get motivated to finish them. I got to the ugly phase of the model and I was just like, ah. And so maybe I started over again and, and I stripped them, but then the models wouldn't cooperate. And so I ended up having to pry some stuff apart and it, the model just broke. And I thought, ah, oh, you know what? I'll just buy another one of these and, and chuck. Um, and I've had a number of projects like that, um, and I'm not blaming it on the models. The models are gorgeous. I love them to pieces, um, but I ended up kind of loving them. Well, not loving them to pieces, uh, but they're in pieces uh, anyway. So yeah, this was exactly what I needed. I feel really good about it, um, and I'm looking forward to adding these to my collection. I don't know. Has this ever happened to you guys? Um, have you ever reached kind of a point where... Yeah, you want to, but you just don't have it in you. Uh, what are your tricks? This is just one of the tricks I've tried. Um, I've, I've tried a couple of others, like restarting, like repriming a thing and starting from scratch, and that didn't work yet. Um, but have you found little tricks to, to kind of get you motivated in doing something that you know you like to do, but you just don't want to necessarily do it right now? I know. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, see if you have any techniques that might help me next time I'm in the Warhammer doldrums. Thank you very much for watching this admittedly short, short video, but short and sweet. It's what I need right now. Have a wonderful afternoon. Be nice to yourselves and each other. Peace.